O'Donohue, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to the first of six live streams that will be taking place over the next two weeks. And this is the virtual Pennsylvania Speed Week. So for those of you who have been following along with this YouTube channel for the past, what, 12 days, uh, we followed myself and my very good pal Matt Faust followed the real Pennsylvania Speed Week around to all of the local tracks in central Pennsylvania. And we've, what we've got here is a bunch of the people who either competed or partook or were just fans or whatnot, or people following along from all over the country who really enjoyed Pennsylvania Speed Week and said, I haven't had quite enough of this yet. I'm going to keep doing it. And so they took to the wonderful simulator platform of iRacing, and they've put together a Speed Week of their own. Now, this Speed Week will be mimicking the 2023 Pennsylvania Speed Week, so there will be six races, and they will be coming to you here live on this YouTube channel. I am alone tonight. My name is Joe Donahue. I own this channel. Um, I do goofy things with the internet, and then other goofballs think that it's cool, and they hang around some. So, welcome if, for those fellow goofballs. This is the uh, schedule, what we're looking at. We've got two races this week. We've got tonight, which is at Cedar Lake. It is representing the race at BAPS, and then we will go to Lincoln tomorrow night. And then next week, we go to, go to USA Speedway. I believe they used that one to mimic uh, Hagerstown, but I'd have to double check on, or Sealands Grove, excuse me. Um, one of the two, I don't know. And uh, then we'll go to Williams Grove, Lincoln, and Port Royal to end it out. So just like the Real Speed Week with six races, there are six races. And I didn't do the math, but I think that's, that's only eight days, so it's not quite the same number of days, but that's all right. So for anybody who's watching along, we are in practice mode right now. We're follow, following Jeremy Zarfos around the track right now. Zarfos, Chris Lynn right in front of him. And there are plenty of, oh, you can't see it. There we go. There are plenty of guys here tonight. There are currently, I believe we are at 32 entries to this session from all over the country. Trying to find some other people out on the track. Chris Fritz is over here. That's the number 65 car. So there's William Rocky. He's behind the big screen. Everybody's pulled off the track. I think that might mean we're about to go into qualifying. So to mimic the actual speed week, we are going to have two cars at a time going for time trials. They are lined up in an order that is set by pill draw status. And that was shared to all of the drivers through the official, I guess we just call it the IPA Posse, the, the virtual PA Posse Discord, where all of these drivers will be hanging out together to take care of tonight's show. So we're just kind of waiting. The officials of the session are going to give everybody the lowdown on tonight, have sort of a, a quick driver's meeting here before we go into the time trials. And like I said, there'll be two laps apiece for everybody to go out onto the track. Two laps, two drivers on the track at a time, and we will get to follow along and meet the field and introduce ourselves to the entire grid of drivers trying to run PA Speed Week virtually. I see Bobby Blazer, B Blaze Vintage, is watching along. Bobby, a, a supporter of... This Speed Week, a supporter of last Speed Week, a supporter of this channel, a supporter of my uh, personal life, everything. Very good guy. Uh, Bobby will probably have to try to get him in here at some point. He'll just have to, I guess he'll just have to win. There are a lot of names in this race that are worth noting, Bobby being one of them. Dakota, Dakota Kuhn is here, uh, crew chief for Jordan Givler. Nikki Young's brother, Cole Young's uncle, Jack Young, who also raced sprint cars, is here. Jeremy Zarfos of JZP, Jeremy Zarfos Photography, is here. Uh, I saw Brett Strickler. He drives a 410 sprint car. I saw him on the list to show up. I don't know if he's actually here yet. I don't see his name. Uh, I thought I saw Mr. Gray in here somewhere. Ryland Gray is here. Yes, he is a wingless sprint car driver out in Indiana. So we've got some representation from other parts of the country. We're not all just porch sitting. We're, a lot of us are, but not all of us are porch sitting tonight. 
but we're not porch sitting anyways because we're in Cedar Lake, Wisconsin for a representative race because we don't have every single event at a Pennsylvania track because we don't have all of the Pennsylvania tracks in iRacing just yet, but we will attempt to take over as time goes on. We're kind of just biding our time, waiting for the uh, guys to get the cars out on track for this next session for the qualifying. I think we've got about 10 people here with us, so that's really awesome. Thank you all for being a part of this Speed Week. We are following the same point structure as the actual Speed Week did, so there will be time trials points, there will be heats points, B mains will have points. We will need to be in main tonight, which is really cool, and then the feature payouts will be all the same. Um, I could get it up quickly, but I think for the sake of time and uh, being able to work on our feet here, I would redirect you to the Pennsylvania Posse, or the, excuse me, the Pennsylvania Speed Week website, paspeedweeks.com. There is a uh, format PDF available on that webpage that you can go on and look up how many points everything is worth over the course of the evening. That is a thing that we can, well, that anybody could do. Uh, and for those of you who maybe didn't know that that was a website that has a whole bunch of really good information about the history, the runnings, everything about uh, PA Speed Week, it's in there. At the current moment in practice there, we had uh, the hot lap session go for Nathan Davis at the top in the 36 car. Jack Young is second. Jeremy Sarfo is third. Kevin Click is fourth. Corey Kerstetter is fifth. And Chris Fritz, sixth. Tyler Shell, 7th, Austin Medea, 8th, Craig Dunn in ninth, and Zach Althoff is the last of the top 10 with times put in there. We got about one minute before practice ends, which everybody's probably going, oh, that's great. We, we finished with Joe talking a lot, and then we'll get to some sprint cars, which is what I'm here for as well. So can't blame you. Yeah, it's a beautiful night. Um, what we've got here, too, another thing I think that's worth mentioning, the officials of this series have made every night's weather conditions mimic the weather conditions of that night's action from Pennsylvania Speed Week. So what we're going to see at Cedar Lake here are going to be weather conditions mimicking that of which we saw on Sunday night. <laughs> that, was, that was a while ago, what, 10 days ago at BAPS? So... It'll be kind of sunny. Uh, it'll be a little humid. It'll be somewhat cool. Not really cool, but not overcast. And as the clock winds down, everybody's very happy to see this go to zero. And that means it's going to be time for qualifying, as I've mentioned twice already. Two laps, two drivers at a time. We'll see what we get as they come out onto the track. The order is set, and we're going to start with one of the guys in charge of making the show go tonight. We'll wait for him to get onto the racetrack. Here he comes, driving the number 12, turn two terribles machine. One of the officials, this is Jimmy Barr, and he is going to get on it for his first lap of the night. Going down the back straight away, Jimmy is going to come off turn four. His first lap is going to go in at a 12.032. Second car to go out onto the track, actually, here he is, is Zach Althoff in the number 417 car. He's coming around to finish his second lap. And his second lap is slower than his first, but his first was an 11.758. So he is going to go into the top spot for the moment. Next up onto the track, we should be able to see, we'll have to pick out where they come in. William Hobart's just chilling here waiting, and here he goes. So, in the turn two terribles, Jer Jeremy Zarfos Photography, number 13 car. This is William Hobart. He goes by Hobart. He's out of Lewisbury, Pennsylvania, and he's on the clock. 
He's the only car out on track, so we are not going two at a time at the current moment. Hobart, the only one. First lap goes in. Oh, excuse me. Second, other car is out onto the track. Hobart goes in with a 12.347. Couldn't see the time. Here is the number 57, the 057 scored car. This is Craig Dunn. Craig Dunn getting in lap number two here. Slides all the way up the banking. And into the second spot he went with his first lap. He is not going to do better on his second. Up next onto the track. Baps paints on the side of this car, number 31. One of the admins as well. Out of Bedford, Pennsylvania. This is Andrew May, the red and black car number 31 for Brent Marks Racing Simula the Ra Brent Marks Racing Simulation team. And into the wall he goes on his first lap. So that is going to be an invalidated lap time for the 31 car. Meantime, the other driver in this session, every time we do this, we pick the guy who goes slower than the first two. Driving car number 90. You see TV on the side of this one by the looks of it. This is Trevor Royer in his second lap. Goes even better. He goes with an 11.725. And Andrew May put in fifth spot, 12.950 for him on the second lap. Now, the 90 car here will come to a stop. And next up, onto the racetrack, car number 65. This is Chris Fritz. Chris Fritz out of Newark, Delaware. He used to drive dragsters. That's pretty cool. Chris Fritz coming around. He raced in the Eagle Bowl, which was hosted here on this channel uh, a while ago. And he's on it for his first lap time. Fritz to the line. Let's see what we can do. 12.009 puts him in fifth spot. And the other car out on the track should be this number four car of Nick Lowe. So there's the 4N. Nick Lowe put in a 12.777. Not the quickest for him. Up next onto the track, driving car number 72. It's scored as the uh, 27 for some reason. Turn two terribles on the side. Jeremy Zarfo's photography on the side. This is David Smeal Jr. David Smeal Jr. Coming back to the line here. And we're going to get an 11.971. So that puts him into seventh quick. And the other car out on track is this car, number 17, Nitro Circus on the side. This is Eric Whitner. Eric Whitner went P6 on his first lap. Next time around, doesn't go. 11.965 for Whitner will put him in sixth place. Coming out onto the track next, car number 76 as the uh, 17 car pulls off. Bryson Ha Ho. We're going to go Ho because I think it's funny. Rowdy Energy on the top. That's a nice looking, sharp looking car. I always love it when they paint the rims on sprint cars, but that might just be me. Up into the wall. And that is not going to count. That's an invalidated lap time for the number 33 car. So he will try again. As he does so, let's check in with the car number 32, Turn 2 Terrible's machine. This is Christopher Lynn in car number 32. And Lynn hits the wall. He got 10th quick up on the board. 12.325, his best lap. And we'll get ready for the next two. Up next, we will see this number 96 roll out onto the track. This is Mark Gebhardt. Mark Gebhardt out of Hanover in the FSI Motorsports Mediocrity Designs Machine. Car number 96 comes to the line, and he's on the clock, and he is sliding. Slide job. And we're having a little bit of a connection issue there. Gebhardt will come around and try to make the second lap a little bit better and cleaner than the first. Meantime, uh, I thought George was out on the track. It's not George. It is James Tenerelli in car number 76 who put up the first... Of his two laps, he comes back around. Glenn's Coors, number 76, Tenerelli, a.k.a. James Spaghetti, goes ninth quick. Mark Gebhardt's second lap puts him P13, and he's coming back around to get off the racetrack now. Up next, one of the main guys, one of the curators of this show, of the Discord, 
of everything that goes on with this group of goofballs who don't really have anything else going on this evening. This, well, he didn't roll out on the track. I was expecting him to go out, but he did not. He rolled up to his spot, as does Austin Medea, and the reason is because we are following the wrong cars. Ryland Gray in the Indy Race Parts Esports number 06 is out on the track right now. He put up an 11.931 to start him off. Lap number two is coming in. Ryan Scheidt puts up his lap time of 11.791. That puts him at the top. Ryland Gray goes slower on the second lap, but let's check in. This is car, scored number 34, car number 10, Ryan Scheidt. He is currently third quick. I think what we're going to see next is Austin Medea and George Wood come out. So here is the number 20. Medea representing Gilbertsville, Pennsylvania. Gray, orange, looks pretty nice. Coming around to complete his first lap. George Wood will complete his first lap as he goes 17th quick. Medea, 12.304, puts him 14th. Here's George Wood. Car number 11, that car is tight. And now it's loose. All over the place right now. He's trying to get the thing... Together, put up an okay lap time. Not quite there. Actually, trying to get out of the way for Medea to put up his second lap. Does not go faster, so not going to worry about it. George Wood, unfortunate. Uh, not the qualifying run he wanted to start off this week. All righty. Who's up next after George Wood? Should be Nathan Davis. So let's find Nathan. He was fastest in practice. He's out on the track now. Car number 36, white. And black with the teal on the number. He was fastest before. What's he going to get here? He is followed by, he should be followed by Austin Griffey. So there goes the number 36. Puts up his lap to go fourth. Austin Griffey. Do we see him on the track here? I don't see his name. Do not see the name, so I think we had one. Oh, there he is. Here he comes. All righty. He's got flow racing on the front. Can we go follow the car, please? Oh, that's Tyler Shell. Yes, this is Austin Griffey. Did not pull his. Did not go out onto track when he was supposed to. Excuse us. Uh, so we've got Tyler Shell out on track. He goes P8. And the other car out on track, where was that name? It disappeared for me. So we're just following Tyler Shell for the moment around the facility. He goes up to sixth quick past the line there. Sixth quick for car number one. Next two out on track. First of the two is car number 95, the Acceleration Motorsports Sim Team car. This is Dakota Kuhn. Kuhn driving with uh, some experience, turning wrenches. Car number 95 puts up a 12.4 flat. That puts him 20th on the grid of cars. So not the world's greatest time for him. But this time will come. Bill Rocky also set to roll out. There he is. Let's go check out car number 71. Trying to keep track of everybody. I guess the session split everyone. The Vengeance Apparatus number 71 is Bill Rocky tonight. Next up on this list is Tyler File. Car number 94. Hyper Racing on the side. There goes File down the back straight away. And behind him in the order, guy representing Indiana, would be Kevin Click. Click on track. And File goes 17th quick. Click's first lap puts him 14th. Eminem painting and construction on the side of the 25C for Mr. Click out of Ontario, Ohio. 
And his second lap is going to be just a tad bit better. 12.033 stays in 14th spot. Up next onto the track will be one of the multitude of 19 cars. This one for Brent Marks, Sim Sports as well. This is Corey Kerstetter. Corey Kerstetter coming out onto the track from Mifflinburg with Inferno Motorsports. Kerstetter on the clock now. He is joined on the track by the Asian Sensation. We'll check him out in a second. This number 19 car goes 12-1-2-5 for his first lap. Puts him 18th quick. Now let's check out where did he go. He went right here. The Asian Sensation Jack Young in the 10N. The Maxim and Baps paints on the sides. His second lap is a bit better than his first. Excuse me, it's a bit lower than his first. Timing and scoring takes a second to get up to speed. So Jack Young is going to hold P19. Excuse me, 15. Yep, timing and scoring doing its thing. How great is that? You wouldn't believe it. Last two guys of who's on the pill draw order to qualify. Starting us off, a lot of people call him Dad, Poppy, whatever you want to say. He's the co-host of the Turn 2 Terribles and the owner of Jeremy Zarfos Photography out of Windsor. This is Jeremy Zarfos. Zarfos joined on the track as he puts up his first lap time, 12.159. And he is joined on the track by an absolute goofball certified. The B Blaze Vintage number 90, running's racing design on the front of it. This is Bobby Blazer out of York. Bobby Blazer out of York, PA, goes to the bottom of the track, tries to rifle up to the top, and hits the attenuator on his way out the circuit. 21st quick for him. Zarfos goes to 13th quick, and I was corrected. That's correct. Corey Kerstetter is not on Brent Marks' sim racing team. He's just a wannabe, I guess you could say. Next up, Wicked Brands, number 222. This is Weston Newell. Weston Newell coming to us. Nice little speed shot. Let's see what Newell's got for us. Past the line the first time, 12.095. 20th quick out of 30 on the board thus far. The other car out on track is pretty recognizable for those of us from the central Pennsylvania area. He drives this exact replica car at Lincoln Speedway regularly. This is the 38S, and this is Brett Strickler out of York. He said Jeremy Zarfos is his hero. He did not out-qualify his hero yet. Will he get his second lap time a little better? It is a bit better, and it jumps him to 21st on the grid. Does not beat his hero. But that is a car worth watching just because we can recognize what car that is. So here comes, there he is on the track, Scored as the 15, Eminem Painting and Construction, Bat Paints, Fredericksburg Eagle Hotel, Jeremy Zarfos Photography on it. This is Michael Sheridan. Sheridan did not fill out my little form to give us information about himself. Black and green, though, on track. He goes 17th quick on the first lap, and the second lap puts him 13th quick. Somebody jumped the whole way up. It was this guy. Ernie Williams Jr., the guy who fellow, the fellow who joined him on track, the ABR setup shop car, number 91. Fourth quick on his first lap. Will he do better this time? This is a car to watch as to go out this late and to run fourth. Something to be said about that one. The only other car left to qualify is Austin Griffey, who missed his slot, so he's out now. That is a phenomenal-looking paint job. Look at this thing. Looks good. Austin Griffey out on track. We're watching. We're counting how many flips he's going to have tonight. Actually, we can go ahead and just quickly... Oops, excuse me. We'll count that. We have the Griffey flip counter at zero. Austin, we'll see if he changes that. Griffey comes around for his second lap. He's 29th in the order with his first one. His second's a bit better. It jumps him to 25th. One. It's a 12.129 for Austin Griffey. I think we're trying to steal a couple extra laps of uh, qualifying out here. But 
That concludes your qualifying session. Trevor Royer goes fastest over Zach Altoff, Ryan Scheidt, Ernie Williams Jr., Kevin Click, Nathan Davis, Craig Dunn, Tyler Shell, Michael Sheridan, Eric Whitner. That is the top 10 with Ryland Gray, Andrew May, and Chris Fritz just on the outside. So the next step in tonight's action is going to be heat races. And those will be coming to us momentarily as they're going to allow the clock to run out. We should be able to skip the end of the qualifying session and move straight into the heat races here. I believe we're going to have four tonight. We should have four. We'll give them a minute. While we're here, why don't we take a minute and just make a shout out. Thank Jeremy Zarfos Photography for being a big part of the virtual PA Speed Week. Matt Faust on YouTube, B-Blaze Vintage for helping out with the behind the scenes on my end to get the show to you guys. it's uh, It's been a pleasure to spend the time with everybody from those camps getting ready and enjoying the real world speed week. I think the both of them are on the stream, actually. Maybe we can get a shout from Matt and or Bobby or Jeremy or the rest of everybody. It's going to be a good night as we continue forward from here. And that little jump right there you see the uh weather kind of change that is the looks of moving into the next session so why don't we go ahead and look at the starting grid for heat race number one tonight starting on the pole is going to be the number 65 out of delaware is chris fritz starting second will be michael sheridan in car number 15 starting to his ah come on what are we doing? We've got problems with ATVO being silly. Don't do that. Thank you. All right. Excuse that. Michael Sheridan will start P2. Kevin Click out of uh, Ohio is going to start third, and Trevor Royer will start fourth with the invert from being fastest. Jimmy Barr is going to be starting in the fifth spot out of Danville. Then we've got Bryson Haw in sixth. Austin Griffey will be watching for the flip count. He starts seventh. Then Dakota Kuhn in the number 95, mimicking Jordan Givler's car, starts eighth. Nicholas Lowe is going to be starting ninth. And that is the first heat race of the show tonight. Getting them all lined up. There's Chris Fritz. Somehow uh, in line behind Kevin Click, even though on my spot, Scoreboard. He should be in front. Oh, well. Not sure what that's about. Might be a timing thing. Oh, well, here we go. So, we've got nine drivers. We've got eight laps, and they're off and away. Out to the early lead goes Kevin Click. He's got Sheridan and Fritz right behind him. Another three wide. Trevor Royer trying to make some noise. He goes to the top side, way top. Fritz goes to the bottom. Everybody running clean in the back. Royer looking to the outside still. That's the battle right now. Third and fourth, two transfer positions. Kevin Click leads the way. They kind of fade up to the top of the racetrack. There's still a little bit of life up there. Now to the inside goes Trevor Royer for second. Is he going to be able to pull Sheridan on the front stretch? No. The momentum goes to the 15 car. Click to the front, staying there and watching this battle. Well, he's not watching them. He doesn't have a mirror. But we're watching the battle unfold behind him. And that's going to let him have a little bit more of an advantage. Some trouble goes on at the back. We've got Austin Griffey and Dakota Kuhn around. Green flag stays out. They get back underway. The 95 and 57 car tangled with each other. They pretty much lose their opportunity to fight for transfer spots, although the transfer spot right now, Chris Fritz has a pretty significant lead. Well, it's not terrible. It's about a straightaway length over Jimmy Barr in fifth spot. Or excuse me, that's actually, the, that would be the final transfer if we're doing four heats. Would be I got to count. Bryson Haw. Oh, Lord, Bryson Haw. Oh, we're going airborne. We're upside down. Now we're going USAC. We got one backwards up at the fence, too. They get out of the way. Nick Lowe involved. Yellow flag comes out for that. Yellow flag with two laps to go as we had a car backwards in front of everybody. 
Well, let me set up this replay. We should, we'll be able to go back and catch what happened here. So let's see. Nick Lowe. We've got Nick Lowe and Haw, Bryson Haw right here. Haw leads into the corner. He completely misses his turn in. And Lowe, as Haw goes flying, Lowe just gets a little bit distracted and goes up into the fence up top and knocks the rear end out of that car. That's over. And then the leaders come around through turn one right here, and that is what brings the yellow. So they are re-racked and re-stacked. The pace truck will get the one to go this time, and we will be hopefully getting back on to action once again. And I was corrected here, so I, th I thought that you could invert within um, iRacing. Well, you can invert within iRacing, but it does a full reset. So they invert only the first driver, so they do it manually. That's good to know, uh, because iRacing does allow you to invert the grid of a starting order. Uh, so, for reference, we will be seeing that the rest of the way through the week. First place will actually be starting in fourth, in third, excuse me. One lap, shootout, and Trevor Royer with a little bit of a send. It doesn't work. Kevin Click is going to win the first heat race of the night over Michael Sheridan, Trevor Royer, Chris Fritz, and Jimmy Barr was granted that final transfer position. Next up, heat race number two. Let's start it off with David Smeal Jr. will be dropping to third, so Eric Whitner will start second, and Nathan Davis out of Indiana is going to be starting from the pole. Zach Althoff is going to go from fourth place on the grid. Althoff, he filled out the order. He's out of York, PA. Jack Young will start in the fifth spot, the Asian sensation from Thomasville. Then we've got Weston Newell. Weston Newell will start sixth over Bobby Blazer from York in car number 90. Christopher Lynn in car number 32, the white, black, and light blue car. And then George Wood in the number 11 will tag the tail of this group, the white with pink accents. He will go from ninth. Looking at the front straightaway of this, I would call this a great facility. I really like driving this track in iRacing. I know that it's not actually in Pennsylvania, but to represent a Speed Week race, this is a great track to do it on. This is a fun little place. You can do some pretty good diamonding. You can rifle off the inside of turn four for a long time. Usually uh, the track doesn't wear out down there as quickly, and it gives you a nice little opportunity. Two-lane racetrack most of the time, I would say. So, on the pole, Nathan Davis. Let's bring it to him. Green flag going to come this time for the 36 car who's in control over the 17 of Eric Whitner. Here we go. Eight more laps. Heat race number two this evening. Let's get it. Oh, look out. Whitner sliding. Oh, we got a big crash. Big pileup onto the back straightaway. We stay green for the moment. And David Smeal Jr. missed calamity. So did Nathan Davis. He jumps right back up to first. Behind them, Bobby Blazer was able to avoid that whole deal, and he runs third. Chris Lynn running fourth. That's a battle for third. And Jack Young has the final transfer as it stands. George Wood having some trouble with connections. Zach Altoff was involved in that wreck. He's trying to catch up to Jack Young and put himself back in contention. George Wood, you can see him running the low side down there. Nathan Smith. Davis, excuse me. Nathan Davis runs in first with no contact with anybody really around him. David Smeal was about two seconds behind in second place. Bobby Blazer running in third. Maybe we can see if we can go on board. I, we'll see if, maybe we'll try this. Let's go on board. Uh, that's not the view we wanted. We wanted the uh, gyro cam. There it is. We're on board with Bobby Blazer as he runs the top of turns three and four. And back up to your leader as he just got the two laps to go signal. White flag going to come this time for the 36 car. Sparing that accident to start things off, this has been a pretty well-spaced out heat race. No yellow, at least not yet. And to the line. Without any contact from anybody else, Nathan Davis is going to be the winner of heat race number two over David Smeal Jr. in the 72. Bobby Blazer just barely edges out Christopher Lynn for third, and then Jack Young's going to get that final transfer of fifth place. 
So there goes the second heat race. And let's bring out the third one. And it's going to be led off by the guy from Windsor, owner of Jeremy Zarfos Photography, car number 19. That's Jeremy Zarfos. Out of Indiana, he drives in, in a wingless sprint car. I know he's run with USAC a few times. That's Rylan Gray. And then we've got Craig Dunn starting. He will actually be starting from the pole as they will invert Jeremy Zarfos from first back. Craig Dunn registered from Australia, New Zealand. That's pretty fun to see somebody uh, from outside of the country joining us for this. Ryan Scheidt is going to roll off from the fourth place position. Then we've got James Tenerelli, a.k.a. James Spaghetti, starting P5. He's out of New Jersey. That makes sense with a, an Italian last name like that. Brett Strickler, driver of the number 38S Bronco Billy's car from York, starts sixth. Tyler File will start seventh in the Hyper Racing number 94. And William Hobart will roll off in eighth place out of Lewisbury, car number 13. They call him... You won't believe it. Hobart. So, from Craig Dunn and the Indy Race Parts Esports number 06 of Rylan Gray, we have the one-to-go signal come out. Eight laps for heat race number three. So we'll let them roll around back. And then we'll try again. You can see Tenorelli there in the beautiful cream and dark blue number 76. I see Strickler. I see Hobart. I see Zarfos. Let's go racing. Craig Dunn with a massive jump over the rest of them. Without contention, at least for the moment, now Jeremy Zarfos moves into second. Past Gray. First lap down goes to Craig Dunn. Zarfos in second. Now Brett Strickler with a huge dive up the inside and a lot of contact there and cars all over each other down the back chute. Hobart, Tenerelli, and Brett Strickler all make contact as Strickler had a great inside line move to try to get as many cars as he could at the start. Unfortunately, things got a little tight there and it didn't end up going his way. Oh, contact! Jeremy Zarfos into the wall. Ryland Gray fed a right rear to him. And Zarfos falls back to the final transferring spot of fifth place, and he's almost about to run into Tyler File in car number 94 as well. Runs the bottom. Stellar run down on the bottom side for him there. The 57 car leading the way. Craig Dunn has avoided all of the, the wrecking and the nonsense. Runs to the top side of the racetrack. He's followed by Ryland Gray, Ryan Scheidt, Tyler File, Jeremy Zarfos. Hobart is the first car out, but with damage from the first accident of this heat race, it's kind of a stretch to say if he's going to be able to make it up in time. Craig Dunn through three and four, and off of four to the white flag. Craig Dunn over Ryland Gray by about a second. The 06 car probably just going to have to settle for second as into three and four to the bottom of the racetrack. You can still see... A little bit of life down there. Craig Dunn going to win the heat race. Craig Dunn winning over Ryland Gray. Rylan, Ryan Scheidt. Tyler File. And Mr. Zarfos will get the final transfer from this heat race. And for the fourth and final, your starting order looks like so. We start at the front from Gilbertsville in the Inferno Motorsports, number 20. That's Austin Medea starting to his outside from Bedford, the car number 31 for the Brent Marks Racing Sim Team. He's out of Bedford in the 31. The big unit is what they call him, is Andrew May. Met him at Port Royal one time. Tyler Shell will roll off in car number one. He's out of Pennsylvania. Let's see if he filled out this paperwork. He did not fill out your paperwork, guys. Starts, he will start from the pole uh, with the invert. I will eventually get used to that. Ernie Williams Jr. will start from fourth place on the grid. He looked super fast. The only guy out of Ohio in this grouping. Ken Baum Jr. will roll off from P5. Uh, he is in car 22K, and he's out of Newville. Corey Kerstetter will roll from sixth place on the grid. He's out of Mifflinburg in the Inferno Motorsports car. Then it's Mark Gebhardt. Gebhardt coming to us in the seventh starting position. And as they come past the stripe for the uh, one-to-go signal, 
the last car on the grid for this heat race, Vengeant Apparatus number 71, Bill Rocky. There is the starting grid for the final heat race of the night. We're going to watch Tyler Shell control the lead over Andrew May. And to the line, green flags out. Great start for the one car. And away we go. Little battle going on maybe for second. Now for third. The top's really dominant. Or maybe Medea just can't get the bottom to work. Uh, it looks like the bottom's not really doing it for anybody. Kerstetter makes a move around the outside of Ken Baum Jr. for the final transfer spot. And what a run into that corner from Ernie Williams Jr. Upsetting everybody as that number 91 car is hooked up and catching quickly the number one car in front. Scored as the 85 on timing and scoring Tyler Shell. But Shell's got things, I think, kind of brought back together a little bit. The Jessup Logistics car... Takes the lead. Williams Jr., can he make the time up as we are halfway through the final heat race of the night? Andrew May holding on to third. Austin Medea makes some contact there. Yellow flag comes out. Not quite sure what for. The yellow is out, even though timing and scoring doesn't say it is. It is. Not sure why we've got a yellow. But it will go to Shell over Ernie Williams Jr., Andrew May, P3, Medea, P4, there's Austin Medea, P5, Corey Kerstetter. He is the final transfer over a phenomenally good looking first watch, Jeremy Zarfa's photography, number 22, Ken Baum Jr., I believe it's 22K scored car. Yes out of Newville. Bill Rocky right there, the Vengeance Apparatus car. The car looks great as well. And Mark Gebhardt must have been the cause of this caution. He will roll from the tail when we get the green. Are the pace truck lights out? Let's get the pace truck lights out. I think we got the pace truck lights out. And that means we will line them up. Got rid of timing and scoring on the screen just to check if we were going to go back to it. But I think the way they're lining up says enough. Green's back out. We are underway once again with the fourth heat race of the night. Shell runs the top side, gets that momentum spun back up. Ernie Williams Jr. in second, trying to find a place on the track. He can make time up. He comes in a little hot and turns one and three, and it does make him time up, but can he hold on to it now? He just ju jumps way to the bottom side of the racetrack, and he loses a bit of time there. So Shell's going to, well, maybe not so fast. Now well, Shell's going to get a hold of it. White flag in the air. Tyler Shell leads us through one and two. Williams, May, Medea, and Kerstetter all spread out. Nobody really c contending for any positions on the racetrack as Tyler Shell's going to win heat race number four. Williams in second. May gets P3, P4 for Medea in the 20 car. And Corey Kerstetter, your final transfer from that heat race. Up next, we've got 14 drivers set to line up for your B main tonight. The B main going to be 12 laps. And let's bring the starting grid to you. We'll start. We'll try to start. We've got words running over each other. But starting... First is going to be the number 95 of Dakota Kuhn. Starting second will be Zach Althoff. Third for William Hobart. Fourth is Ken Baum Jr. We just saw Ken Baum miss by one spot. So top four are all the guys who missed transfers by one spot. Fifth placed Austin Griffey, car number 57, or at least that's scored that way. Weston Newell will start P6. Then James Tortellini will start seventh. Eighth place for Mark Gebhardt. Bryson Hall will start ninth. George Wood will round out the top ten in the white and pink, number 11. Then, starting P11 is going to be the 38S of Brett Strickler, the Bronco Billy's machine. Starting in 12th will be the Vengeant Apparatus, number 71, of Bill Rocky. Then we've got Nick Lowe 
and Eric Whitner starting 13th and 14th. They should be on the final row. I see... I don't see low. And I don't see Austin Griffey out here either. So we might have two scratches from the B main. Four more drivers will be advancing to the A main from this one. So 12 laps to do it. My buddy Cole is watching along with us. Cole is out of Kentucky, said he felt out of place watching. Uh, Cole, there's no such thing as being out of place watching sprint cars. We love sprint cars. Okay. Let's give it a go. Dakota Kuhn will control them to the line. Uh, we've got 12 cars out on the racetrack. Green flag out. Big jump for Kuhn. Will they call it back? I don't think they're going to call it back. He started it from turn four, so we should be good to go. There's a lot of movement going on back here, so let's check in with... I want to especially look at Weston Newell because he's kind of jockeying a bit. Right now, top four is there. Ah, can't get close. Hobart and Altoff got real close to each other. Ken Baum Jr. holds on to the fourth and final transfer. Tenorelli misses the bottom pretty bad, and he was in contention and loses it. Now Ken Baum's going to go to the inside of the number 417. Zach Altoff hit the wall, keeps hitting the wall. Oh, contact back here, and we got two of them around. And look out, Gebhardt and Newell make contact. Yellow flag comes out. The 222 of Weston Newell and the number 96 of Mark Gebhardt. Let's check a replay quickly of that, even though we kind of saw it in the background. We're going to roll back a full lap here. Just up front, you can see where Altoff's hitting the top side wall. That's uh, going to be causing him to lose a spot up in front of this ordeal. You can see Brett Strickler right behind these two. So there's Tenorelli on the bottom side. Gebhardt just slides it in deep. Newell comes off the wall. They meet in the middle. A racing accident puts Gebhardt and Newell into the turn four wall and then trying to avoid stalling. Newell kind of rode up the left rear of Gebhardt. That's how that one goes. And as they line them back up, we'll check in at the front. Dakota Kuhn leading the B main still in car number 95. Bobby, we appreciate the uh, support there. Bobby putting a bunch of goats down in our uh, chat. I think he's trying to put one goat in for every driver who's racing in the field tonight. Don't blame him. We will be able to keep track of points for the virtual PA Speed Week as the week goes. Uh, just not completely up to date. They are going to be tracked through iRacing, which means we have to go get them later. Dakota Kuhn leading us back to the green. Now Hobart, Altoff, and Ken Baum Jr. They make up the four positions that currently hold transfers. Let's see what we get off the restart. Kuhn leads the way past us in turn two. Hobart holds second. Altoff holds third. Ken Baum Jr. A little bit of separation to Tenorelli. And it's slick. You can see it's slick because they're sliding all over the place. Now you got a battle for second. Altoff into the wall pretty significantly in the middle of the corner. It's going to let Ken Baum Jr. get around him on the inside. Oh, big slide there from Tenorelli. Contact with Baum and Altoff. You guys are in positions. You are in transfer positions. And here comes Brett Strickler. Yellow flag is out. We will not get it. Yellow flag is out. And I think it's Weston Newell again. It is. We'll have to check a replay of what happened to the 222 car again. The car's busted. They got the rear end knocked out of it. Ooh, this is going to be more contact with Gebhardt. You saw it there on the screen. That 57 car was Austin Griffey, who rolled off late for this one. He's actually four laps down. Not quite sure why he's out on the racetrack. Uh, makes contact with Gebhardt, and then Gebhardt slides down the track into... Weston Newell again, and unfortunately, that is going to be the end of uh, his hopes, I would think, with that much damage, and we'll have, what, four laps to go when we start again? A little gassy there. <laughs> it's all good. We're dirt track guys. We don't really care that much. 
So we'll have five to go, I believe, at the stripe here. Kuhn has led the entirety of the B main. Hobart, Althoff, and Ken Baum Jr., they've pretty much been the only guys in the transfers for uh, the majority of this one, the B main, that is. So we'll line them back up and try it again. Pace truck should pull out of the way, as you can see from how bunched up we're getting. Kuhn's going to lead us back. And the green's back out. Do we see anything happen back here? Brett Strickler was getting real quick. Ooh, contact for second again. Althoff and Hobart, you are in transfers, guys. You are in transfers, guys. Oh, Ken Baum's catching up. And we've caught and passed Dakota Kuhn, actually. Hobart goes to first. Strickler is lurking. That might be shaping up for a battle. As all over the racetrack and Strickler sends it in. He tries to get Baum that time. We go three wide for the lead. Two to go at the line. Hobart goes low. Somebody's getting bounced off the wall in the background. Hear it. Kuhn back to the lead as they go past. Chalk sticks in the air. Two very sig significant and distinct racing lines. We're watching Althoff. Strickler goes through the middle and takes the final transfer spot away as the white flag comes out. Battle up front. Kuhn, Hobart, Kembaum Jr. They race for first through third. Just a Barely a nose for Kuhn into the corner. Oh, contact! And Althoff spins Strickler. And into the wall he goes himself. And granted the final transfer as we cut away right before we were about to see Brett Strickler show a little bit of frustration. What a tough break for that guy as he had a transfer spot and he got a, he got a tail tag. Eric Whitner grabs the final transfer position from the B-Main. So they will do the redraw, and then we will get to see how the starting lineup lines up, I guess. But man, you talk about tempers flaring. It's night number one, and we're racing that hard to get into the A main. What a deal. Warm-up session underway. Nobody's going to come out yet. I think we're still working with uh, the officials. Trying to get that redraw done to see who's starting where in the A main tonight. I believe the A main's 30 laps. I might be wrong about that one. But we'll, we'll check. I don't know if we're going to actually wait. Are we actually going to wait 11 minutes for this? I, I don't think so. I think we're going to get a skip ahead at some point. Or we'll get cars on track. Somebody's out here. I hear Tyler File doing donuts. May as well watch it. Don't really have anything else to watch at the current moment. Um, we can shout out Jeremy Zarfos Photography, B Blaze Vintage, Matt Faust on YouTube, my channel here. Hope you guys are enjoying the show tonight. We've got six of these, this being the first to do over the next two weeks. So we'll have two nights this week and four nights next week. With everybody coming out together, Ken Baum Jr. there, he uh, made the feature. Good for him. File qualified, so he's good to go. Yeah. Ten minutes. Do we have to wait ten minutes? We'll see. Check out some of these cars just for the sake of uh, getting familiar with them. That's Ken Baum Jr. in the first watch. And, of course, the uh, screen is blocking our view. There's Jeremy Zarfos. M&M painting and construction on it. Jeremy Zarfos photography. That's the car number 19. Ken Baum Jr. There he rolls. You can see first watch. Project Zero. Turn two terribles on the side of it. Chris Fritz rolling very slowly. Christina Auto Parts, Chris, Christiana, excuse me, car number 65, that's Chris Fritz. Andrew Mays back behind him, the high-performance lubricants. Baps Paints, number 31, Brent Marks Sim Racing Team, I believe. Let me double-check that. I've already missed called that before tonight. Yes, he is. Okay, just making sure. 
Kevin Click is up here, 25C, m and painting and construction on that one. A lot of cars, but he's got K1 race gear on there too. A lot of cars with uh, those sponsors. Kevin is out of Ontario. That's pretty close to, that's close to Mansfield is what that's near in Ohio. About an hour northeast-ish of Columbus, sort of in the middle of Columbus and Cleveland. Click is definitely one to watch tonight. He was fast already and getting comfortable with the outside wall. Let's pull back the camera a little bit, and uh, Tyler Shell puts up a lap. Goes fastest so far. Zarfos, right there. Ken Baum Jr., outside of him. Third quicks thus far. Kerstetter, Ernie Williams Jr. Ernie's car, that's a great looking car. It's, very, it's pretty simple, very sharp. And I've always been a proponent of yellow and purple together. I think yellow and purple is pretty good. If you do it right, it definitely works. And it's working for Ernie tonight. Let's see if we have Ernie in here. We do not have Ernie inform in Ernie's information. We do have uh, this guy, Dakota Kuhn, for Acceleration Motorsports. Austin Medea. We're just kind of buzzing the track here, working it in a little bit. Oop, contact, and Chris Fritz is out of the way. Check in with Bobby Blazer is blazing it up, that's for sure. Having fun, why not? Made the feature, you're all good. Oh, we're, have, we're going for it, guys. <laughs> Eric Whitner, is he out on the track yet? I don't think he's out on the track yet. He's... Actually sitting right in front of us, that Nitro Circus car. Uh, we don't have enough pit boxes for all the cars, apparently. And everybody pulled off. So I think we're done warming up the track. Another good look at Ernie Williams Jr. here. Right in front of him. Here, you can't quite see it. That's the 06 of Ryland Gray out of Indiana. Then Corey Kerstetter is in front of him in that number 19 car. We're just trying to help identify, I mean, this is helping me too, but we're just trying to identify these cars uh, moving forward for these next two weeks. That's Jack Young in the 10N. Where's Ryan Scheidt? We haven't seen Scheidt in a while. He is not in the car. So there it goes. All right. We have split. We have set. We are ready to go. The feature, 30 laps tonight for the first race of the virtual Pennsylvania Speed Week. Let's bring the starting grid to you as they all line up. Starting from the pole, let's try this. Hide, start grid. There we go. Kevin Click is lined up. Now, actually, we I don't want to confirm yet or not because uh, they're going to read. They did the redraw to line everybody up. So not 100% sure who's starting from pole. Kevin Click is listed there. I don't know if that's going to stand. Nathan Davis second. Craig Dunn is third. Tyler Shell fourth. Michael Sheridan fifth. David Smeal Jr. will be sixth, allegedly. Rylan Gray seventh. Ernie Williams Jr. in eighth. Ninth, Trevor Royer. Tenth will be Bobby Blazer. This should be about where we can get confident. Uh, Ryan Scheidt would start 11th. Andrew May 12th. Chris Fritz 13th. Christopher Lynn will start 14th. Tyler File will start 15th, 16th for Austin Medea. Jimmy Barr, 17th. Jack Young, 18th. Jeremy Zarfos, 19th. The final transfer from Heat Races is Corey Kerstetter. He starts 20th. And then the four from the B-Main, Dakota Kuhn, William Hobart, Ken Baum Jr., and Eric Whitner. So one to green will come out this time. And as the great Earl Hoon Jr. would say, we want to know who you're rooting for tonight. Will it be... From the front, will it be Craig Dunn starting in the second row? Could it be the 90 of Trevor Royer? Could it be Ernie Williams Jr. from pole? We're about to find out. 30 laps is the distance. Green flag's coming to him. Never mind. Guess we weren't quite in line. The officials didn't like the lineup. We'll try it again. 24 drivers in 12 rows of two. Sometimes it's hard. If you were at Port Royal last night, you'll see, you would know how difficult it can be sometimes to line cars up. Uh, if you saw the URC race, you'd 
no, it's not always the easiest thing to do. This time, a very slow jump, and Ernie Williams Jr. takes the lead. Will we stay green? That's the question. Yes, we will. We got to jump back here. We got a big battle going on in the fifth place area. That's Tyler Shell to the outside. Oh, click contact right there. Craig Dunn. Oh, contact more. That was Chris Fritzy hit. Yellow's out. Yellow's out. And backwards is Craig Dunn. Eric Whitner avoided that, I think. Maybe not. Well, let's catch the replay. See what happened. As unfortunately, a great starting position for Craig Dunn goes instantly to the wayside, and he's going to have to take it back to the pits to try to get that car repaired. Let's check it out. All right. So on the inside, that 25C car, Kevin Click makes contact with him. Just barely past him goes Gray and uh, Sheridan. A little piece of Chris Fritz. Everybody else is able to avoid it. Knock the front end, maybe not out, but definitely damage the front end of that 57 car. And he lost the front wing. Uh, we'll check in. Let's go live and check with Chris Fritz. Come on. Here we are. Chris Fritz damaged the 65 car at all. Might have gotten a little bit. Doesn't look like anything major. So he will continue on. Not going to come into the pits. One to go sign given this time. Excuse me. Ryland Gray right there. And your leader to the line should be... As it's all circling. Ernie Williams Jr. And back on it we go. Two laps down. Junior leads us to the green. Ryan Scheidt in second. Nathan Davis in third. The uh, timing and scoring giving different numbers than what's on the car is going to screw me around a little bit with Ryan Scheidt here until we get used to that car. But for the moment, everybody runs to the top side of the racetrack. One clean lap in. Thank goodness gracious. Trevor Royer looked to the inside, seeing if that maybe was an opportunity to make time up. Didn't look like it. He tries to slam the door on Tyler Shell, who gets all the way up into the wall. I think we've got some contact going on a little bit further back, but everything stays green. Williams Jr. leads the way up front, and the back of the pack is really where the fight is going on right now. Jack Young, Dakota Kuhn, Ken Baum Jr., William Hobart, they're all back there. Uh, I think Jimmy Barr is trying to make up. So, oh, it's Bobby Blazer around the number 90 car. Backwards, a 360. They all back up. Yellow flag is out on the racetrack. The number 90 B Blaze Vintage Machine. Running's Racing Designs on the side. That's damage. I think it looks like it's squatting a little bit. He might be okay. He will have to go to the tail. Car looks phenomenal, by the way. That's a beautifully painted machine for Bobby Blazer. And why not check a replay? Replay coming. Bobby in three and four. Now, one and two is where we see it happen. This is post-incident. Here it is. Into the corner. Barr sends it in a little bit deep, a lot deeper, actually, than Blazer does. He pins it to 360, and absolutely gorgeous. Oh, and contact up here with uh, Zarfos and Christopher Lynn, two of the Turn 2 Terribles guys. They collect each other. Not a ton of damage, but definitely damage to those cars. We'll see if that affects the driving of the 32 and 19 cars, respectively. Blazer should be okay. He will go to the tail. Actually, uh, not complete tail, because he's in front of... Actually, now, yeah, now he's complete tail. Took him a second to sort him out, but it's all good. Ernie Williams Jr. leads us back. Green flag is out once again. We almost hit the pace truck. That's a, that's a Cedar Lake special on iRacing. Ryan Scheidt with a nice run. Maybe going to try to make a move here. Will he be able to hold on? They are train racing to the top of the racetrack. Check in with the mid-pack here. We're looking at David Smeal Jr. Andrew May racing beside him right now. To the inside. May makes the pass. Smeal to the back. Back to the front of the duo. And May slide jobs him into three and four. That goes. Kevin Click, Ryland Gray. You're looking at two cars right there from the Midwest. They are racing for sixth place. We got a pass for the lead. Slide job for the lead for the 10 car. Ryan Scheidt, he led that lap, but Williams will send it back to him. The favor repaid into one and two. 
Keeps Nathan Davis and Trevor Royer close. Royer, big send. Can he two for one him? In turns three and four. Gets to the middle of the racetrack. He gets one of them. Will he try the second time? He tries. He can't get there. Has to leave a lane for the 10 car, and the yellow fly comes back out. Racing is halted for a wingless car. Eric Wittner, Corey Kerstetter, Dakota Kuhn, Jeremy Zarfos, they all come to the pit lane, and we're going to check out what brought this yellow out following the 17 car. So let's jump back a little bit. He's beside Kuhn. We've got Hobart right in behind those two. Chris Lynn and Jack Young in front. Up the track. Does he close? The, yeah. Well, that's actually, that is net code. You can see the net code from here. And then Kuhn loses the front wing. Not even a flip over for Whitner, and he still loses the top wing. A lot of damage to that car. And I'm not sure where Kerstetter or uh, Zarfos come into play with this. Probably just have damage from a previous accident, especially uh, Zarfos with that last incident before. So let's jump back to the leader. Saw that replay there, so just a net code issue between Kuhn and Whitner. Whitner in the pits. Kuhn is on the racetrack. Or actually, excuse me, he's in the pit lane at the moment, but he is set to come back out. I think Whitner might have parked it for the night. The only guy who's parked it so far is Craig Dunn. He is scored eight laps behind in 24th. So one car out of the picture. We've still got 23 of them out there, or at least getting ready to get back out there. Well, Ernie Williams Jr. getting ready to bring him back to the green, and here we go. I didn't think so. I, I really didn't think so. We were still putting cars out on the racetrack again. Oh, well. Ernie. You can see uh, timing and scoring being silly. Since it's not counting the laps under yellow, uh, the, the board rotates in numbers. It's goofy. It is what it is. Ernie Williams Jr. back to the green. Huge jump that time over Ryan Scheidt. Royer, third. Got some battles going on sort of in the mid-pack. Here's Michael Sheridan, who went to the low side. Everybody else going up top. It looks like he's just losing positions. I think those are teammates right there. Andrew May around the outside in the 31 car. Nice run through those corners. Yeah, the bottom does not look like it's working. We got a pass for second. Trevor Royer has put himself in position. He go, oh man, he went up real close to the wall there. Very lucky. A little bit of luck, a little, lot of skill there. Kept the 90 car from just absolutely pummeling the outside wall. And a slider for third. Tyler Shell, and he's in the wall, and it gets repaid to him. Ryan Scheidt back into third. Scheidt was going strong at the beginning. Royer with a huge slider. Absolutely cut off the 91 car. And Trevor Royer leads the first lap of the race for his number 90 team. New race leader. Trevor Royer and Bobby Blazers having issues at the back of the grid. The yellow does not come out. I think Blazers going to get off the racetrack. Royer leads over Ernie Williams Jr. Shell now making a big pass. Slider. Lap traffic going to come into play. Crossover from Williams. Gets back. Will we see another repaid favor from Shell? He can't get the run off the corner. And he backs off into turn three. Whoa! Big crash! The leader is involved! That's a yellow. The two guys who are running first and second are now caught in a little bit of a pickle in turn three. Try to get the 90 car off the front of the 91. Goodness gracious, that car is toasted. That number 90 car. Let's get a hold of him in the running order. As he goes back to the pits, replay this one. This is going to be a gnarly one. All right, we're following Dakota Kuhn. He's a lapped car. Royer is the leader. This white and red is the leading car in this race. He goes for a slider on the lapped car. Oh, oh, we are already involved in an accident. Kerstetter and Zarfos. So we'll have to replay it one more time. 
Let's go back a little further, see what happens here. That's too far. Uh, we'll go check in with Kerstetter. Kerstetter. Actually, Kerstetter's behind Zarfos, so what are we doing here? Hmm. Might have skipped backwards a little much. Oh, sorry. That's that's David Smeal, who was the original lockup. Man. Well, we just saw it go through the motions there. So it's Smeal who gets it wrong. Zarfos into him. And then Chris Lynn. Uh, Royer just sent it in and had nowhere to go. That puts Tyler Shell in the race lead. He has adopted it for free as two of the main competitors he had for this win now go down the tube. And all of a sudden, you've got Ryan Scheidt back in the picture, realistically for a win. Nathan Davis is now P3 in the 36 car. Very fast car. That's definitely one to keep an eye on as we move forward. Kevin Click is still there, and Chris Fritz has moved up to fifth just by the attrition rate. And back up. Timing and scoring doing its thing. We will go green this time. 22 laps down, eight to go. Shell leads us. And green flag is out. Tyler Shell. Easy lead. Ryan Scheidt right there with Nathan Davis, who gets a little woed up. Kevin Click's going to try to make a pass. Seven laps remaining in this one. Click runs the middle. The momentum didn't help him. He got a little bit of help. Ryland Gray's having issues. Dropping down the order, we stay green. The 06 Indy Race Parts car goes out. Shell leading still. He's got about a half second lead as they come into turn three again. You can see the track is slicking off. Guys using different strategies to get through it. Shell went full commit. Uh, Shite went to the high side to try to make up time. Use whatever moisture is still left up there. Shell's trying to make the track shorter. We'll see who it's helping. It looks like on timing and scorings and Shell is making time from the lead. We'll check in with a nice little battle. Medea, Ken Baum Jr. and William Hobart racing three wide now for the 10th spot. Medea on the top, Ken Baum Jr. to his inside. Hobart backs off a little bit. Three laps to go at the line. Nice battle here, nice. Better battle than what we got going on for the lead, although the lead is diminishing a little bit. Two to go. Is there enough time for Ryan Scheidt to make it up? Shell off the top. He is darn tootin' off the top line. Showing a lot of experience here as he comes to the white flag. One lap to go for car number one. Jessup Logistics on the side of the wing and through one and two. Will Scheidt have anything for him? A big send. No, he's just going to have to let it go. Checkered flag comes out, and Tyler Shell is going to win the first race of Virtual PA Speed Week 2023. Ryan Scheidt, Nathan Davis, they make up your top three as the rest of the running order comes through. And how about that? Easy Ws. Shell was untouchable, besides the guys who... Unfortunately, wrecked out of this one. And let's see if we can get the scenic cam on because we got fireworks going off. Nah, we're going to have to do the uh, blimp cam here. So we've got the top three up there. We'll see if we can get the top three in points. Or excuse me, well, I think they would be the top three in points. Try to get them into the Discord uh, to talk to these guys. We'll give them a second because the uh, whole racing deal went down. We've got the winner. So let's go backwards and pause and do main cam one to zoom in on this car. We've got third place in there as well. And let's start talking to them. Let's bring in the first one, Tyler Shell. Joe Donahue here, you got a copy. 
Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we got you loud and clear. Tyler, congratulations on winning the first race of Virtual Speed Week. It kind of got handed to you a little bit, though, admittedly. Uh, your main competitors for this win took each other out in a uh, little bit of lap traffic problems earlier. Yeah, I, um, that was definitely uh, crazy how that all happened. I thought I was going to be getting wrecked there because I had to slam on the brakes, but God, uh, people are racing around were um, aware of what happened, and I was able to get through there with no damage. And um, yeah, uh, I had the car on rails tonight. I um, was able to go anywhere I needed to in the feature, and it uh, it prevailed to the win. Yeah, talk about that. How how do you keep up with the racetrack, and especially considering how fast you were at the very end of that race? Talk about how you either discipline yourself or work with that car to make yourself so untouchable when the track got slick at the very end of the race? Dumb. Just got to kind of just keep the tires under you a little bit. Just be a uh, cautious on the throttle and be aware of um, the wheel spin and uh, just make sure you're always pointing straight and uh, not sliding too much so you're not um, burning the right rear off of it. Absolutely, and that is a factor these days uh, with that newest update from iRacing. The, they do have wear on the tires here. Now, Tyler, the big question is, do we see you coming out every night this week? Are you going to try to contend for the championship starting off on such a good foot? Um, sadly, I won't be able to. I'll, uh, I'll be up until Tuesday, and then I'll do the first three races, and then i got to head out because I'm going to uh, Eldora. Uh-huh. Starting Tuesday, so um, but we'll uh, be sure to uh, watch the other three nights. That's what we like to hear. Well, congratulations, Tyler, and uh, I'm sure you know having fun at Eldora. But who do you want to thank? Who do you have to shout out on this race car for everything that's gone into taking the victory tonight? Yeah, I'd just like to uh, thank Elbows Up Some Sport and all the guys there. Uh, Morning Tires, Full of Racing, um, Justin Logistics, and Rufco, and um, Trevor Mayer for the help. Awesome. Well, congratulations again, Tyler. First win, uh, first night, first win. Seems a pretty good way to start things off. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that is Tyler Shell. First place tonight in car number one. Fitting that car number one gets that. Next up in the order, we got the, it's scored as the 34. It is running as a number 10. Second place tonight is Ryan Scheidt. You got a copy? Yes, I do. All right, Ryan, not a bad performance. You're very strong the whole way through the night. Just talk us through. Uh, you got a little bit of luck at the end of the race. What did you see from your perspective, and, and did how did you try to capitalize at the very end of this race when uh, we saw the, especially with uh, Williams, who was very strong, uh, getting caught up in some carnage from lap traffic? Yeah, uh, I was just uh, trying to handle my car, actually. It didn't. It wasn't great. Uh, so there wasn't much I could do. I just had to fall in line and try to hope to not get past. And I had one opportunity to get Ernie and then that didn't pan out. And then, uh, after the next restart, uh, Royer came flying through there. Unfortunate for him and Ernie to get taken out in that mayhem halfway through. But, uh, yeah, I was really just kind of hanging on, trying to keep the car in the groove as best I could. Uh, I need a completely revamp this thing because it it just didn't drive very good it is very different now with that newest update in iRacing here now I'm I'm curious on your perspective because from the outside it looked very consistently strong maybe not necessarily the single fastest car on the racetrack at any point in the night but always one of the top two or top three Uh, from your perspective were you sort of were were you holding on to that car in a way that you you feel like it was consistent the whole night Um, do you think that there was anything left in the tank or, or do you think this car was just a consistent, good top three car tonight? Uh, yeah, it felt the same the entire night. I just had, I, I just had too much of a push through everything from qualifying through the feature. I just couldn't be fluid with the throttle and steering because it just kind of jerked around too much. So, um, it's a learning curve. I, everyone at Black Diamond, uh, we're working off of kind of a similar base, and we all kind of make our adjustments to how we like to drive. And I just, I was a little off tonight. Um, I was probably a fifth or sixth place car there in that feature had things panned out differently. So I got pretty lucky to get second. Well, it looked very, you looked very strong. You were definitely not a factor to be uh, left out, and a little bit of luck always helps uh, with your top two getting wrecked out. 
with eight laps to go. We talked to the winner, and uh, Tyler Shell will not be running all of Speed Week, so we're curious to hear, uh, are you planning on attending every of the six races here to try to contend for a championship? You got a good start. You're on the right foot. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't look exactly at the schedule. The guys just messaged me earlier today and said hop on at 6 30 <laughs> and so so i did so i'm not sure if they're running over the weekend uh, i believe we got some real racing going on over the weekend i'll probably attend to so chances are probably not make all of them but we'll see right right on we will not be uh racing during the weekend but they are all over the place so we'll be looking forward to seeing you out again on the track uh ryan i want to give you the center stage a nice run into second tonight is there anybody else you want to shout out or anybody you need to thank on the broadcast for what's gone into this 10 car tonight absolutely uh, all the guys at black diamond uh, we've been grinding pretty good and i think it showed definitely tonight we uh, stopped started top four for all four of us that were in there and we were all up towards the front so uh tim nichols with tim sins uh, Ross with Velocity Designs, Nate with Totally Tinted, Zach with Rounds, Wraps, and Tents, Brett at UDTV, and then you for broadcasting this thing, and Fossey for putting it on. Absolutely. Well, congratulations again, Ryan, from everybody here. Great performance to start the week off. I'm sure you're feeling pretty good about it. Yep. Thank you. And that is Ryan Scheidt out of position number two. And the final of our podium finishers, final interview we're going to get in here, is going to be from the number 36 and driver, Nate Davis. Nate, this is Joe Donahue up in the booth. You got a copy? I got you, man. All right, Nate. Well, you were very strong at the very beginning of the night. And the beginning of the feature, you were not in the top five per se. Uh, but you got it together. Now, let's start at the beginning of the night. Talk about those heat races. Talk about your car when the track was tacky. Did it feel like you had a top three car when you started the night off? Yeah, for sure. Um, we were super fast in the heat. Um, I don't think I prepared enough for the feature, though. Um, like, you know, I did. I checked out in the heat. It was super fast, super smooth. But when the feature came, I should have snugged it up a little more than I did. I wasn't anticipating it to get that slick since this build is kind of build slower. So... I wasn't really prepared for that, so I was struggling with a looser car. I had my wing all the way back, so I was as tight as I could get it. Basically, just throttle on it, and then really the only thing that got me a podium was that that wreck between the the front two between Trevor and uh, Ernie, and then those lap cars at the end there, and going into three. And luckily, you know, I went low and didn't get any damage. Um, I did tag the the wall a couple of times and got some wheel damage it said so i was fat battling that as well i heard click behind me a few times even seen him beside me basically i was just trying to just keep the wheels under me and just hold my ground now i'm curious it's interesting you say that because the car it seemed at least from the outside like the car kind of came to you over the course of the feature now if you say you you didn't feel like you were quite prepared for the feature i'm curious what either what you if you feel like it changed or if you changed the car to accommodate, because it seemed like at the end of the race, now granted you did have a couple spots handed to you, you did have what looked like a better car. Was it just you controlling the car or do you think that it came around? Uh, it was more me. It definitely didn't come around. Uh, I was only running about 60, 70% throttle there at the end. And then I feel like if I would have added, you know, drop the stagger a little bit and, move the right rear end just a click or two it would have been a little bit better and probably a lot faster um just sliding through the slick i was i mean i was really off the gas pretty much the entire race well it's uh sometimes the way you got to get around here and i'm sure you're paying attention a little bit more with that damage you said uh, it would probably pay into taking a little more care of the car but hey you, you got there i mean third place isn't too shabby are we going to be seeing nate davis run the entirety of speed week here trying to get those max points and run for a championship yeah i am going to try my best to be here for every event um i should be able to make them uh so i will be here and hopefully to do the points contention we had a good night tonight good qualifying good heat you know solid feature so we got some good points tonight and then uh, we'll come back tomorrow and you know try it again well, that's what we like to hear, Nate. Well, congratulations on a podium. Definitely well-deserved. You had a great night to go to about it and uh, definitely a good setup to run for that championship. Who do you want to shout out and thank for everything that's gone into the 36 car to get you onto the podium tonight? Uh, all the guys over at Black Diamond Motorsports. Uh, since the build came out, we've been grinding since it's actually fun again to race the sprint cars. They're not as broken. Um, 
Brett Wheeler, Ultimate Dirt TV, response since Ross Carenta, Velocity Race Designs for the Paint. Uh, Dylan Hauser, House of Speed for the late model setups when I run. I, I carry his logo on his car, too. You guys for broadcasting, all the guys at the Posse for putting the league on, and uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. That's right. Congratulations again, Nate. We will be seeing you, and hopefully we'll be talking to you from the podium again tomorrow night. Thank you, Joe. All right, and that is your podium tonight from first to third, Tyler Shell, Ryan Scheidt, Nathan Davis. Great runs all around. We can take a look now at the final standings for the uh, 24 drivers who started 30 laps at Cedar Lake. We'll call it BAPS just for the moment. Results coming to you here. Your winner, Tyler Shell, we talked to him. Great run for the one car, Ryan Scheidt, second, and Nathan Davis, P3. That's your podium for the first of six. Kevin Click, as Davis mentioned, was hustling for the podium. It did not quite work out for him. He finished his P4. Nice top five for Chris Fritz. He got involved in a very quick incident at the beginning of this event was able to fight his way back up through the field. Sixth place is going to go to Jimmy Barr. How about the 12 car getting up into the top 10? Nice run for him. Didn't really talk about him much during the race, but he evidently stuck his own. Andrew May, P7 at the end of it in thir the 31 machine. Tyler File going to come home P8. Ninth place for Michael Sheridan in the 15, the black and green car. And Austin Medea ends up P10. Start or finishing 11th, excuse me, going to be Ken Baum Jr. from the B. Great run for the 22 car. William Hobart also actually came out of the B main, and he will finish P12. Jack Young, 13th in the 10N car. Then we've got the turn two terribles number 32 of Christopher Lynn in 14th. David Smeal Jr. ends up 15th tonight in front of Corey Kerstetter in 16th. Ernie Williams Jr. led this race for a while, ends up P17. He did get himself back out onto the track by the looks of timing and scoring. Just didn't have it. A little bit of bad luck. Rylan Gray, we saw him drop out pretty close to the end of this race. He will be scored 18th at the end of it. Dakota Kuhn, unfortunately, caught up in some junk, finishes 19th. And Trevor Royer, who was leading and then wrecked from the lead, Ends up scored 20th, 21st for Jeremy Zarfos. Not the night he wanted to start things off. Bobby Blazer in the number 90 car. Tough breaks to start things there for him as well. Eric Whitner, we saw him get involved in a pretty significant crash at the beginning of the evening. He ends up 23rd and 24th. The only driver uh, out of it early, early was Craig Dunn. So we're done running through the results. You like what I did there? And at the end of the first night, we don't have the uh, points up for you immediately, but we, one would have to assume with the way the points are tallied, Tyler Shell is the championship leader uh, for PA Speed Week. So we've got one of six down and five more coming to you. Tomorrow night, we go to, let's pull it up because Joe forgot, we go to Lincoln. I was pretty sure. So tomorrow night, we will be headed to Lincoln. We will be starting the broadcast at about the same time. We'll have the points, so we'll be able to check that out before the racing gets going and see if Tyler Shell comes out and can defend again. Once again, for everybody on the Joe Donahue channel, we want to thank you for tuning in tonight. We want to thank everybody at the PA Posse Discord and the iRacing PA Posse group for putting the show on and having us in to broadcast it. It's been a pleasure tonight. We've got plenty more to come. So on the flip side, we will see you from Lincoln. Until then, a pleasant adieu. Take it easy, everybody, and be sure to check out what comes tomorrow. <laughs>